Today, step by step, I recreated three Mr. Beast animations in After Effects. The first Mr. Beast style animation we'll recreate will be this one. A $50,000 sign levitating above a ship. We're going to first of all find a clip that showcases this sort of boat and the ocean. So something like this is going to work perfectly well. We have some movement, so we need to apply the 3D camera tracker because we want the text to reposition based on the camera movement. Let's select the boat area right here, just like so, and right click, create text and camera. First of all, I'm just going to change the text to $50,000. Second of all, we need to change the font. Mr. Beast uses the Comica Axis font. You can get it for free on dafonts.com right here. Change the fill color to very bright yellow. Let's reposition it a little bit. And I'm also going to add a stroke. Let's set it to something around 20-ish pixels. Now, if I play this back, looks cool, but that's not all yet. Right click the text layer, go to layer styles and click bevel and emboss. Okay, this effect is going to be super cool because now if I enroll this right here and if I increase the size to something around 20 and that way we are able to add some super cool depth to the text. I'm also going to search up the glow effect, drag it over onto the text layer. Let's decrease the glow threshold, increase the glow radius a little bit. Looks nice, but we can also do one more thing. Let's duplicate the footage with the boat. Let's Put it at the top. Let's rotoscope the ship. Hit freeze so that the mask can complete. <sighs> now, if I go back to the original sequence, I'm going to go to position by clicking P. I'm going to add a keyframe. So basically, I'm just going to keyframe this at the beginning. I'm going to move this keyframe somewhere around here. And now right at the start, I'm going to bring the text below. I can also scale it down. Bam, reposition it. We've got something like this, which looks not so good. So select these keyframes, hit F9, go to the speed graph and change these keyframes a little bit, just like so. We also can enable motion blur and we can enable motion blur for the text in particular. Okay, it looks nice, but as you can see, the text is visible at the beginning of the animation. So what we can do is you can just go to transform, you can change the opacity. So at the beginning, we're just going to need to set the opacity to zero. And then once we start showing the text up at the top of the boat, we can increase it. Maybe let's put this a little bit later in time. Okay, and now that looks good. For the next Mr. Beast style animation, let's recreate these three X's symbolizing a three step elimination. By the way, you can receive the three projects we are working on today completely for free by subscribing to my newsletter. Check out the pinned comment down below. In order to create this animation, we're going to use the rounded rectangle tool at the first. We're going to disable the fill and we're going to enable the stroke. Okay, and that stroke is going to be very sort of vibrant yellow. Set it to around 20 ish, 24 pixels and create this sort of shape. Let's center it, right click, go to layers, tiles and go to bevel and emboss. Expand this and increase the size to something around to like 18. Okay, next up, I'm just going to duplicate this rectangle we just created. I'm going to disable the stroke and I'm going to enable the solid color fill that works. And now let's just search up for gradient ramp. Drag it over onto that black layer. Let's select the start of the ramp right here and the end of the ramp right here. Now let's just bring it behind. Also, I'm just going to remove the bevel and emboss effect. Next up, I'm just going to drag over my profile picture. Let's just shrink it down and let's just create a mask roughly to cover it up. Bring it below the yellow frame. Okay, cool. Now let's go over to the rectangle tool, change the fill to this radial gradient fill. Okay. And we're going to need to change the colors here. The color on the left is going to be like a brighter version of gray in comparison to the right side, because it's not very bright, but just just a little bit. On the right side, we want a dark color, something towards black, dark gray, something like that. That's what we are looking for. Hit OK. And let's just create this rectangle right here, something like that. Bring it below everything. Now we need this gradient to be a little bit bigger. So let's just select the gradient fill and expand this. 
And now let's duplicate this. Let's apply a grid effect onto the top one. Shrink it, shrink it. Recompose this layer with the grid. Create a mask right here. Okay, very nice. And now I'm just going to change the blending mode to overlay. You can also adjust the opacity of that layer. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to that shape layer with the grid and I'm going to change the border to around three because it's a little bit too thick. Next up, we need to add the text and it's going to be three X's, X, X, X. I used a font called Chivo and it's pretty much the closest I could get to the original in Mr. Beast's video. And yeah, here are the settings. The fill is again, this very vibrant yellow I use right here. The stroke is like a darker version of that yellow and it's 22 pixels. You also need to remember that you need to increase the distance between each X quite significantly. Now that we've got that done, let's just remove the last X. Okay, let's duplicate this layer. On that top layer, let's just leave only one X. Hit position, bring that body out a little bit. Now let's enable visibility for the double X's and bring this out to the left, just like so. Now next up, what I'm going to do is we've got this sort of singular X. What we can do now is we can pre-compose that layer. We can search up Lumetri color, drag it over onto here. We do basic correction and lower the saturation to pretty much zero and lower the exposure quite significantly. Okay, now that this X is grayed out, we can duplicate that X and we want to keep two versions of it. One with this Lumetri color applied and one without it. So let's just delete it right here. Cut. Move this out further in time. If I play this back now, bam. It looks fine, but the transition between non-X and X is really sort of rough. We need to change that. So let's apply the glow effect right here. Drag it over onto the X. And let's first of all decrease the threshold, increase the radius significantly. And let's just go to the beginning right here. Just go to effects, glow. And I'm just going to enable keyframing for glow radius and intensity. Now let's just move out a few keyframes further away. Bring the glow radius to zero, glow intensity to zero as well. If I play this back now, it's fine, but it could be better. So bring these keyframes a little closer to each other. I'm going to select them. I'm going to hit F9. I'm going to go to the graph editor and in the speed graph, I'm just going to select these two. Bam create something like this. That looks nice. That looks nice. Okay. But still what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the beginning of this animation somewhere here. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard by having it selected. So that's going to enable opacity settings. And at the beginning, I'm going to set it to zero. And then just a few, literally few keyframes later, I'm going to set it to 100. Once again, Nice. Now the last step, we'll go back to the background for the X's and the grid. We're going to select these two layers, pre-compose them, and we're going to apply a mask. Okay. Very simple mask. Basically, we're just going to create something like this. Bam. Invert that body and then increase the feather significantly. And this just allows us to have this very nice fade out effect on the right. If I play this back, let's check out the final result. Bam. And for the third Mr. Beast style animation, let's recreate this 60 second elimination countdown timer. First, we'll need this kind of font. Using the rounded rectangle tool, let's create this sort of rectangle. Let's change the fill to a darker gray. Remove the stroke entirely and let's increase the roundness of that rectangle. Now we're going to create another rectangle that's going to be on top of this rectangle, just like so. I'm also going to center it. Now let's pre-compose these two layers. Let's apply a gradient ramp. Let's make the top color bright gray and the bottom color dark gray. And let's bring those points slightly closer. Let's pre-compose this. Let's now duplicate this layer. Let's apply change to color to one of them. Let's switch it to hue, lightness and saturation. And now let's bring that white object beneath the gray object. Scale it up by literally half a percent. We can adjust the opacity. Let's just bring it down a little bit. And I'm just going to apply some Gaussian blur as well. We can also adjust the position slightly, play around with these settings, pre-compose this layer again, and let's apply a mask right here. I'm going to invert it and I'm going to increase the feather a lot. And now let's create this text layer that says elimination, elimination. Let's scale it down, reposition it, change the font. 
let's change the color as well. Now let's apply glow to that layer. And I'm also going to apply a drop shadow. Now I'm just going to use the basic rectangle tool with the fill set to black and the strokes set to a very light gray. And that rectangle is just going to go like this. Now let's create another text layer and this time is going to be for the countdown timer. Let's change the font to the DS digital font, make it way bigger. And now using chat GPT, I was able to generate this sort of code. I'm going to paste it in the description. Just copy it while holding left alt on your keyboard. Just click the stopwatch icon and paste in the script. That way we're going to achieve this countdown effect. But that's not all yet because we need to apply this pixelated sort of screen effect right here using the grid effect in After Effects. So let's duplicate this layer with the black background for the text. Let's pre-compose it. Let's apply the grid effect. Bam. Adjust the settings like so. Duplicate it. Pre-compose it and create this sort of mask. Let's change the blending mode to saturation. Let's bring the opacity down a little bit. Now let's duplicate that layer. Let's change the blending mode back to normal. And let's change the opacity of that normal layer to something around 12 or 14, 16%. This is the before and this is the after. Yeah, so remember that you can receive the project file, check out the pinned comments and make sure to check out this video if you want to learn something new.